great saints of Yahweh. May the peace of Yahweh be with each and every one of you. You may be seated. I'm going to pick up right where the great deacon left off. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, one of the forms of rebellion that we're getting rid of right now. That the Catholic Church uh, promulgated or propagated. Uh, we're going to continue on this Gregorian calendar. Last week we talked about, you know, we start learning about this great red dragon. Um, we're going to continue here. It says, uh, first of all, everybody does know that the calendar is out, right, and available. And the new, the new prophetic word magazine. Let's start with uh, this Dermatria. Now, I need you to write these three numbers down. Just go ahead and write them all down right now. 433. This is Gregorian calendar. 433. 912 and 152. We're going to be going through each of these numbers. Let's start with 433. And it means God. <laughs> well, of course, right? <laughs> Isn't that what Gregory propagated? These gods? The deity. It means God. And it says false God, but uh, brothers and sisters, there are no false gods. <laughs> They're all real. They're gods. Okay? Yahweh's not a God. Okay? That's where they get mixed up. And it's from 410. And it means God, goodly, idol. And it means, it's from this word L, E-L. It also means mighty men, men of rank, and mighty heroes. Like the Herodians. You know that word Herodians, if you just look it up, it means heroes. Okay? That's what Herodians mean. They're the mighty men, you know, from Genesis, the mighty ones. The word Gregory, by the way, I, I know this has been brought before, but I'm going to remind you. The word Gregory is a Latin word, and it comes from this Greek word, Gregorios, meaning watchful or alert. And it's from this word Gregorian, meaning to watch, to watch. Please write that down. Watch, to watch. The next number on the gematria is 912. Now, Hebrew 912, Barabbas, y'all remember him, right? <laughs> you know, they're still choosing Barabbas in these last days, I noticed. <laughs> you know, they don't want the righteous to rule. They're still choosing uh, unrighteousness. Right here, it's from 1347. It means son of a father or master. We all know what master is, Lord. It's from 1347. Now, the great deacon just got done talking about this subject of humility, right? Well, here's the opposite. Arrogant, pomp, pride, proud, swelling, exaltation, pride of God. Pride, arrogance, in a bad sense. Okay, but first of all, See, they try to make out like pride, there's a good sense too, a righteous sense, right? No, pride is not anything you want, okay? Get it out of your vocabulary. It's not, it's not going to be welcome in Yahweh's kingdom. You know, they say swallow your pride. I say spit it out. <laughs> Don't swallow it. It's unclean. Okay, and it's from 1342. And it means to rise up. To be exalted, to rise up, grow up, be lifted up. From 1346, highness, pride, proud, arrogance, etc. Now, remember, I just told you the number. The, these first two numbers we went over, these two numbers. So turn now to page 912 in your book of Yahweh. Remember this inspired, beautiful book of Yahweh right here, right? You, won't, you can't do this in the King James. You can only do it in the book of Yahweh, so get one. We're going to go to Galatians chapter 4, speaking about the sacred pole and this calendar. The way that the world is setting their feast. Let's look at Galatians 4, verse 8, at the bottom, on page 912. It says, do not worship gods in any way. Okay, this is the lesson we're learning about God worship. It says, but then indeed, 
When you did not know Yahweh, you were in bondage to that which by nature are nothing but gods. But now knowing Yahweh, or having rather having been known by Yahweh, why do you return to the powerless gods and bow down to sacred poles? You know, why do you follow this Gregorian calendar? Because that's what they're following. They're bowing to the sacred pole. The very sacred pole that Pastor wrote about in this book written in 1988, Deceptions Concerning Yahweh's Calendar of Events. I want them to see that because there is a sacred pole right there. They call the sacred pole. There ain't nothing sacred about that thing. That's a filthy, abominable thing. That we're getting out of, completely getting rid of, out of the house of Yahweh completely. Isn't that a great blessing, brothers and sisters? Okay, it's back to the reading on page 9, 12, 19, 13 now. On verse, verse uh, I'm going to read verse uh, 9 again. But now, knowing Yahweh or having been known by Yahweh, why do you return to the powerless gods and bow down to sacred poles? Why do you want to be in bondage to them again? From this you watch. From this you watch. Remember? Gregorian, watch. From this you watch for feast days in deviation from this right here. Yahweh's sacred calendar. Okay, you see that? Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, can you back up? Look at that beautiful. Here's the calendar. This is wonderful. The house of Yahweh joyfully celebrates returning to the original tree of life, not the tree of death. Remember, we're getting, the, we're getting rid of the gods. They're not welcome here. Okay, so he says, I'm afraid for you that I have labored over you to no purpose. Okay, now let's look at the third number here. Word number 152, it's number 152, Gregorian calendar. 152, it's a dramalac, and it means Adar is print. Adar, an Assyrian idol. It's from 142, it means to be great. Now, if you know anything about the Hebrew calendar, I'm not talking about our calendar, but the Hebrew calendar. You know, the one that they follow that's mixed with the sun and the moon worship. You see here the astrology, the zodiac. Notice their month. Uh, I don't even like saying them anymore. You can read that. <laughs> On the It corresponds with this Gregorian calendar of these months right here, the second and third month of the year. And it's the word Adar. And it's from these two words, 4428. It means king, and it's from 4427. It means to take counsel and consult. Now turn over to Deuteronomy 18.9. Deuteronomy 18. I'll give you a page number. On page 162. Deuteronomy 18.9 says, When you come into the land, Yahweh your father is giving you. Now listen to this. We're fixing to fulfill these very things right here. You're going to be greatly amazed this feast. Okay? It says, when you come into the land Yahweh your father is giving you, do not learn to follow the abominable ways of those nations. Let there not be found among you one who sacrifices his son or daughter in the fire. You know, letting them watch television, war, play war games. Giving them over to war. Who practices divination or sorcery interprets omens, engages in witchcraft, casts spells, or who consults familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer. Anyone who practices these is abominable to Yahweh. And because of these, the other nations are being uh, put out. And that word necromancer, I know I've brought this before. It's from, it's word number 825 in Strong's and it means... An astrologer, a necromancer, conjurer, astrologer. 
You know, in this book, Deceptions Concerning Yahweh's Calendar of Events, Calendar of Events, if you look on page 28, there's a warning against the use of astrology in setting feast dates. <laughs> okay, and that's what this calendar, this Gregorian calendar is all about. It's about astrology. It has nothing to do with going out and looking for the green ears, you know, getting off your lazy duff, <laughs> going outside and actually observing something instead of a television, <laughs> right? You're actually going to have to get up Go outside and look. And then once you spot the green ears, the following new moon, right? And you can read all about this on page 28 and 80 through 11 in Deceptions. Pastor wrote all about this. Now, go to Isaiah 47. Let's turn to Isaiah 47 where there's another admonition. Isaiah 47, found on page 560. Let's look at verse 13, or 12. Stand fast now with your enchantments, your enchantments. Speaking to these divining serpents on the seven hills. Stand fast now with your enchantments and the multitude of your sorceries in which you have labored from your youth. It may be that you will succeed. It may be you will prevail. Cause terror. You are wearied in the multitude of your counsels. Let now the astrologers and the stargazers and the monthly prognosticators, you know, the ones that like to give you horoscopes to read, stand up and save you from these things which will come upon you. Here's, here's what you get when you read the horoscopes. You want any part of that? Should pass over those completely. They have nothing to do with Yahweh. 666. And that last, the last definition of 152 uh, from the Greek, it means to be sh ashamed, a thing to be ashamed of. And it's used in Hebrews 12.2. Let's go there. Hebrews 12.2. Hebrews 12, verse 2. Talking about this race we're running. Is everybody keeping up? All right, we're almost at the finish line, okay? Let's run this race with endurance, it says. In verse 2 says, Looking to Yahshua, the first who was led and perfected by the faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the sacrifice, despising the shame, despising this God here, this sun God, the Lord. Okay, he despised him. How did he do that? He didn't sin. Okay, that's how we despise the shame, this, this, this Lord here, the sun God. We despise him by getting rid of the calendar, the Gregorian calendar. Isn't this wonderful? <laughs> We're doing what Yahshua did. He had no part of this. He had no part of this world. Okay, we're coming out of this world completely. Now, speaking of astrologers, you may have heard of this guy. Um, his name was Christopher Clavius. Kind of sounds like Columbus. That's kind of interesting. But he was a German Jesuit. That should tell you something. <laughs> he was a German Jesuit mathematician and astronomer and astrologer. He's the one that proposed the modification of the modern Gregorian calendar. Isn't that comforting to know the Jesuit worked on it for you? Wow. He was from uh, Bamberg, Bavaria, in the Holy Roman Empire. The Roman Papal States. You remember Papal States 666? <laughs> you know? And he was German. Now, let's add it all up. What does this all add up to? Remember the numbers I gave you? I told you to write down. Let's add it all up. 433, 912, and 152 is 1497. Turn to Revelation 22. In your inspired book of Yahweh, Revelation 22, verse 15. It says, for outside are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers. Outside the gates. Outside are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and worshipers of gods, Gregorians. 
who watch in deviation from Yahweh's sacred feast. Look at this on the side note.